Hello, everyone. My name is Xin Yi. I'm a PhD student from Washington University in St. Louis. Today, I'm going to present our paper, Boundary Sampled Half Spaces, a new representation for constructive solid modeling. Solid modeling is a major area of study in computer graphics and has wide applications in design and manufacturing. One of the most common representations for solid models is constructive solid geometry, or CSG. First proposed in the 1970s, CSG combines simple solid shapes into complex solids using Boolean operations. The simple shapes are known as half spaces since they partition the whole space into two pieces, one inside the shape and the other outside of the shape. Using Boolean operations such as union, intersection, and difference, CSG can model lots of different shapes, shown here as yellow solids. However, CSG has several limitations due to the use of Boolean operations. First, CSG cannot express all shapes represented by a set of half spaces. For example, suppose we want to represent this yellow shape using CSG bounded by the two ovals. This shape is not the result of any of the three Boolean operations shown on the previous slide. We can still represent the shape as CSG, but we'll need at least one additional half space, such as this half plane C. Now the shape can be expressed as the difference of oval A with C followed by the union with the intersection of oval B with C. Note that this half plane doesn't contribute to the visible part of the shape, but it's necessary to compose the Boolean expression. We call this half space a hidden half space. Identifying hidden half space not only adds burden to user during interactive design, but also remains a key challenge in reverse engineering CSG from other representations, such as meshes. In fact, Shapro and Wurzler showed back in the 90s that the geometric complexity of hidden half spaces increases with the geometric complexity of the half spaces that bound the shape. To date, it remains an unsolved problem of constructing hidden half spaces for shapes bounded by algebraic surfaces with degree higher than two. Another major limitation of CS3 is that Boolean expression can get complex quickly with increasing number of half spaces, such as this Adobe logo using 10 linear half spaces. Maintaining such a complex expression adds to the burden of the modeler, and it's not easy for a modeler to understand. A third limitation is that the same shape often can be represented by many and drastically different Boolean expressions. The large possible space of Boolean expression is an another major challenge in reverse engineering CS3 from other representations, particularly if the goal is to find a representation that is easy for humans to understand and edit. To address the aforementioned limitations of CSG, we propose a new representation for solid models from half spaces. In particular, our representation doesn't need hidden half spaces, it's intuitive and lightweight, and is easy for reverse engineering. Our representation, like CSG, uses a set of half spaces. Instead of Boolean operations in CSG, we define the shape using a set of samples lying on the half space boundaries. The idea is to use samples to indicate which part of the half space boundary belongs to the boundary of the final solid shape. Our shape, which is called boundary sampled half spaces, or BSH in short, is defined as a subset of the half space boundary that bounds a solid shape. While there are many possible such subsets, such as the ones shown here, the subset we are looking for satisfies the following requirement. First, it should preserve half space orientation. This eliminates the, the second shape. Next, it should contain as many samples as possible, which eliminates the third shape, since it only contains one sample. Last, the shape should have at the least boundary length in 2D or boundary area in 3D. This favors a more compact solid shape. While well, these criteria are sufficient to define the desired shape in this example, we have observed that they could lead to artifacts that are common in other examples, 
we shall show in the next slides. Consider this example, where a triangle is defined with three linear half spaces and three sample points. Now suppose the user adds another component of design away from the triangle, such as this semicircle defined by a circle and a line. Since the line of the hemicircle intersects with the triangle at the bottom, and since we want the shape to be as compact as possible, a corner of triangle is cut off by that line, turning the triangle into a trapezoid. The user can recover the missing corner by moving one of the original samples towards corner, like this, or add new samples. But such maintenance will need to be done for every other part of the shapes that's affected by that line. As a result, the modeler would need to repeatedly check for corner cutting and make changes accordingly often far away from where the new edits are taking place. In addition to corner cutting, the shape can also be truncated in the middle, as illustrated here with an addition of a second semicircle on the top. To prevent these artifacts, our key observation is that the truncation happens when a piece of shape boundary does not contain any input sample. Specifically, consider the first corner cutting scenario. We call a connected component of shape boundary that comes from the same hub space a tail. Here, we see two tails, one on the top, which contains a sample, and one at the bottom, which doesn't. The bottom tail is the source of our problem. It's chosen to be part of the shape because it makes the shape more compact, but it is separated from the top tail that contains a sample. By requiring that each tail must contain a sample, the bottom tail would not have been chosen and the triangle would not have been truncated as shown here. We call the shapes that meet such requirements sample connected. The sample connected requirement ensures that the shape triangle is intact even with multiple potential corner cutting half spaces present as shown here. Now we return to the definition of BSH shape and add this sample connected requirement. This gives a full definition of BSH shape. BSH shape defined this way has many nice properties. An important property of BSH is its describability. BSH can describe any shape using only half spaces that bound the shape and sufficient number of samples. Here we show a number of shapes expressed using our representation. The describability of BSH is a key benefit over CSG. For example, CS3 has to use hidden half spaces on the last two examples, while our representation never needs hidden half spaces. This makes our representation simpler for both design and reverse engineering. Although the theoretical upper bound of number of samples needed to describe the shape can be large, in practice, we find that most shapes only need a small number of samples, thanks to our sample re connected requirement. The use of samples instead of pooling expressions also allow BSH to represent a shape in a more succinct manner than CSG. For example, to represent this Adobe logo shape using 10 linear half spaces, BSH only requires 11 sample points, one on each segment of the Adobe logo shape. But CSG would need a much more complex boolean expression. Now we introduce the algorithm to extract the boundary of a BSH shape. We first consider the simpler task of ignoring sample connected requirement. In this scenario, the problem can be equivalently formulated as, a, as an inside outside label in of the arrangement cells induced by the half space boundaries. This labeling task in turn can be formulated as a graph cut problem on a weighted graph. Please see the paper for details. Similar graph cut formulation have been proposed for reconstructing piecewise linear shapes from point cloud. The result of graph cut algorithm may contain tails that do not contain any samples, which we call island. Here is an example. The islands are pointed out by the arrows. For comparison, we show the sample connected BSH shape, which doesn't have any islands. A key observation is for each island, Either the island or one of its adjacent patch on the arrangement doesn't lie on BSH. For example, 
The red arrow points to an island that lie on the graph cut result, but not on the BSH shape. Another example is this island on the top of the shape. It lies on both graph cut result and the BSH shape, but one of its adjacent patch pointed by the red arrow doesn't lie on the BSH shape. In reality, we don't know which island or which of their adjacent patches doesn't lie on BSH. So we explore all the possibilities using the following state space search algorithm. Each state is a set of patches of arrangements that cannot be used. We can forbid the use of a patch by setting its length to infinity. For example, the initial state is an empty state, which means every patch is free to use. A state can be expanded into several new states by computing graph cut in the states and setting one of the island or its adjacent patches to be unusable. For example, for each arrow pointed patch, we can set it to unusable to generate a new state. Here shows several new states after expansion, each of them representing a different choice of unusable patch. These new states can be further expanded in the same manner. All the states can be ordered by their corresponding graph cut cost. We show in the paper that by exploring all the states in best first order, we are guaranteed to find the BSH shape. Although this algorithm is guaranteed to return BSH shape, the number of states to explore can be prohibitively large. Therefore, we use a greedy search algorithm to approximate the state space search. In each step, the best state, which has the least graph cut cost, is expanded and we pick the new best state from the new states generated from expansion. This process is repeated until a sample connected result is found. In practice, we find this greedy search is not only efficient, but usually produce the optimal solution. We'll go through this example, this error algorithm on the S example. We expand the initial state and find that setting the lower right element to unusable will induce the least graph cut cost. Compute graph cut on this state. We get this solid shape. Now we expand this state and find that setting the upper left island to unusable will induce the least graph cut cost. So we pick this state and compute graph cut on it. Now the result is sample connected. So the algorithm terminates and returns the shape, which is indeed the BSH shape. Here we show more shapes computed using our boundary extraction algorithm. The small bars indicate the orientation of pop spaces. These shapes cannot be easily represented using CSG, which would require a complex Boolean expression and possibly hidden half spaces. Another key benefit of BSH is that it's rather straightforward to convert from another shape representation, such as meshes. The two ingredients of BSH, namely the half spaces and samples, can be obtained from an input mesh either using existing algorithm or simple heuristics. To obtain the half spaces, we first employ an existing mesh segmentation algorithm to divide the mesh into smooth segments, and then fit each segment with some half spaces that's easy to edit, such as a primitive or a freeform surface, such as a variational implicit point set surface, or WIPs in short. The red dots are used by WIPs to control the shape of the surface. Finally, a sparse set of samples can be obtained by a applying a simple heuristic that iteratively adds new samples until the original shape is reproduced. This see the details in the paper. If we compare this process with that for reverse engineering a CSG shape, both process start with fitting half spaces to the mesh. However, BSH only needs to generate a sparse sample after that but reverse engineering CSJ would need to additionally solve an optimization problem that recovers the most plausible and easy to use Boolean expression. This is usually the most challenging step in reverse engineering CSJ, and existing algorithm often fails to produce an editable Boolean expression. Here we compa compare the result of reverse engineering for CSJ and BSH. 
starting from the same set of hub spaces as shown in, on the left. This input consists of six tori, 10 planes, and one cylinder. Although this example can be obtained by a relatively simple sequence of pooling operations, applying a state-of-art algorithm for inverse CS3 on this input produces a complex pooling expression tree. Many of the operations in this expression are rather counterintuitive, such as a highlighted operation, which is an intersection of the two components. It's difficult to imagine how a modeler could use this output to continue editing the shape, such as adding or removing parts and adjust the spatial relation between parts. In contrast, by converting the input in PSH, we can easily modify the shape, such as removing some rings and a shelf and changing the dimension of structure or even detaching a shell from a wall. All these edits are achieved by either changing the parameters of the primitive or their samples. The BSH representation is well suited for interactive editing. Without a separate Boolean expression, the user is more focused on the shape itself, which is controlled by the geometry of hub spaces and the sample points. We first demonstrate the interactive editing of a simple example shown here. This shape is modeled using two hub spaces, a sphere and a cone. The sample are shown as dots. The user can select the cone, add a new sample to add a part to the shape, or delete a sample to remove a part. User can move a sample to get a new shape. User can also flip the orientation of the sphere to obtain a different shape. Flip the orientation again and move a sample to get another shape. The editing process is intuitive. Users don't need to think about complex Boolean operations. And some of these shapes cannot be modeled using CSG without hidden half spaces. We next show a more complex example. The waste is converted from a mesh input. It consists of 14 half spaces, six of which are represented as freeform implicit surfaces using WIPs. We first demonstrate the deletion of a half space, such as this green surface, which makes a neck of waste longer. And now this blue surface, which removes the handle of the white vase. Note the remaining half space still form a solid shape. Now we select a freeform surface and change its shape by moving its control points. The body of the vase now has a different geometry, while the solidity of the shape is still maintained. Finally, we add some new components to the shape. For example, we can add a new handle to the vase by first creating a torus and then adding a sample. This keeps only part of the torus on one side of the waist. A last example, we'll add a mouse piece to the waist. We start by creating another torus. Then we add one sample point on the body of the torus and another sample point on the plane lying on the top of the waist. In summary, we have proposed a new representation for solid models using half spaces. Our representation doesn't need hidden half spaces, is intuitive and lightweight, and is easy for reverse engineering. We, we have analyzed the, the describability of our, of our representation and design algorithm for boundary extraction and reverse engineering. One limitation of our representation is its scalability. Due to the graph cut formulation, we need to compute the full arrangement induced by half spaces. This step is time consuming, even using the state of art method. Please visit our project page for more video and code. Thanks for attending this talk.